If there's one thing I can truly appreciate, it's a good underdog story when it comes to vintage computing. And boy, have we got one for you today with the Coleco Atom. Welcome to Vintage Geek, I'm your host Aaron Ishmael. If you're new here, we make videos each and every week about vintage computing and vintage computer systems. If you like that sort of thing, I would like to encourage you to like and subscribe. It's going to help us out a lot as we grow the channel and the Vintage Geek Museum. On to our topic of the day, the Coleco Atom. Back in June of 1983, Coleco announced at the CES show that they were coming out with a new computer product. Now Coleco was already famous for the ColecoVision game system, which had a pretty large following. Coleco had plans to release this computer system that was supposed to contain everything you would need for your family's computer at home. That included a letter quality printer, which was something that other companies had not offered, as well as a built-in word processor software. But most importantly, and most impressively to people at the CES show, they were announcing this entire package was going to cost about $600, which was unheard of at the time. Someone had even made the comment in trade publications that getting the printer alone in some instances would cost more than that. As time went on, that price went up because they obviously oversold the idea a little bit. Their bigger challenge was that after announcing this in June, they promised to have these units shipped by Christmas, and they were thinking about getting half a million of them on the shelves by Christmas time. That did not happen. They ran into production delay after production delay, quality control issues, you name it, they had it. They were ultimately unable to get these on the shelves in time for a true Christmas buying season. Ultimately, the Atom lost millions of dollars in the course of its life and was deemed a flop in the long run. However, the system does have some fairly good reviews of the performance itself when you didn't get past the defects, which were another huge problem. Even some stores were saying five out of every six Atoms sold were returned for some kind of a technical problem or defect. Now, the Atom folks themselves said that their failure rate was less than 10%, so there's obviously some discrepancy there. But there's no doubt that they had a lot of issues with this computer system, and those issues ultimately doomed this computer to not have a very long life, and by 1985, it was completely discontinued. But I'd like to take a look at this system here on Vintage Geek. I love a good underdog story, and it seems like there's a lot of promise to the actual hardware and the software involved. We have a lot of components for the Atom system that we've acquired in the museum over time. We do have this boxed original right here that's a complete set. It is not sealed in the package. It was certainly used, but someone did a nice job of putting things back in the box. Given the failure rate of the system, I'm not super optimistic that uh, any of these systems will work out of the box, but we're going to give it a try here on Vintage Geek. I want to also mention at this point, before we get into this, about the box itself. I'm pretty impressed with Coleco and their marketing efforts and the way that they put this whole box together. First of all, it's huge. The box is bigger than any other computer system we have because it is, as they say, everything you need in one complete package. But just the presentation of it overall looks really good. The Atom really is bold and stands out. If this was on a shelf at a retail store, especially around Christmas time, I could see that people would really be drawn to it. There's a lot of color and a lot of imagery here that's really nice. They were also uh, very heavily invested in marketing for this product. Unfortunately, they couldn't produce to meet the uh, demands they created from it. But one of their early marketing campaigns was on television and actually involved a very young Lori Laughlin. Now, command the powers of Atom with professional keyboard, high-speed memory drive, and built-in word processor program, all in one package. Oops, you gotta start over. Relax, Adam. Do that paragraph. <laughs> Is that legal? And... Adam, even a letter quality daisy wheel printer. You did it! Adam, my launch sequence. Is that legal? Command the powers of Adam and program your future. So the first thing I see when opening this box is the ColecoVision Family Computing System Smart Writer Printer. This was the letter quality printer that they shipped with these units. And according to the reviews, they really promised more speed out of this printer than it was able to deliver, but still, it was a letter quality printer that was included in a very low price point, which was certainly appealing. These items are pretty dirty. This was actually from a barn find, so even though the packaging is intact, these are not in the greatest condition. This section looks like it was designed to hold the keyboard, peripherals, and software, and unfortunately, this particular one is missing those items. Thankfully, we have those from other items in the collection. And then finally, we have the Atom unit itself. This is the standalone computer unit. There's a piece missing in the front, it looks like, so 
This may not be a working system, but thankfully, as I mentioned, we do have multiples of these. Condition-wise, it's certainly got its dirt and grime on it. It looks like someone has gotten into the top of it before. The first thing I notice is the badging that's on the top. Adam, the ColecoVision family computer system, memory console. To me, that's actually kind of interesting because they call this a memory console. Now, for all accounts, this is the computer itself. All of the processing lives in here. Other than that, you've got a television and a keyboard and a printer. So uh, memory console is kind of an interesting name to choose, but they use this for both versions. We'll talk about that in a minute. First and foremost in the front, you've got this tape drive. And this isn't a normal tape drive. This is actually called a digital data pack drive. This was something unique to Coleco and their Atom technology. It's basically a cassette, but it's formatted differently and it's actually used in pure digital form as I understand it. So it doesn't read like a cassette. You can't just put it in a normal cassette player and hear audio. It does have what appears to be normal tape transport mechanism inside, and it does have normal tape heads. They gave you the option to have a second high-speed data pack cartridge drive in here, in the second slot. In this particular one, it looks like they may have tried to install one, or I'm not sure what happened, but there's a hole here, so I'm guessing that someone may have had a second drive in at some point and then ended up removing it, but I'm not sure. It technically has a ColecoVision game system built into this same chassis, which is why it's slightly larger than its counterpart. It also gives you a couple of extra things in the front here and on the top, where you've got this cartridge slot, now this cartridge slot would be for standard ColecoVision game cartridges, so you could use those with this system as well. And you had a reset switch for the computer, and there's also a reset switch for the ColecoVision side of things. When you pop the top off of this, there are some expansion slots in here. And as I understand it, there was a memory module add-on where you could add some RAM to the system, give it a little bit more capability. I'm not sure what other add-ons that you could put in these slots, and it's also possible that you may have needed one of those for the second tape drive, but I'm not sure on that. On the side here, you've got a DB9 port. As I remember, this is actually how you connect the printer to the system. Now, the printer, in the case of the ColecoVision Atom, is one of those things that's very interesting because the power supply and all of the power for the computer came from the printer. I guess this was a way that they could save on cost and they could work that into the design. But it's a bit unfortunate because the printers were prone to failure, which means that if the printer didn't work and the power supply didn't work, the entire system wouldn't work. So this is where that would plug in. And then on the back, you've got your television and monitor outputs, an auxiliary video connector, and you've got a switch to choose between channel three and four if you were going into a standard TV input using their modulator. And on this side, we have two controller ports, these were for the ColecoVision style joysticks that had kind of the number pad on them. And on this, you've got the expansion slot, which you could do further expansions if they were available or made available for the system. And finally, it's worth noting that uh, on the front here, you've got this kind of telephone style connector, which I believe is what connects the original keyboard to the system. Very quickly, this is the small version of the Atom computer system. This is actually called the expansion module number three for the ColecoVision. The difference here is that this is a smaller form factor because this is actually meant to plug directly into an original ColecoVision to basically expand it to become the Atom computer. So all of those components that are in the larger case are not necessary because they're actually made possible through the original ColecoVision game system. And it did this by basically having this plug-in module on the back. This would slide right into the expansion slot on your existing ColecoVision. So what this did was a smaller price point if you already had the ColecoVision. It would utilize some of that hardware, save you some cost, and give you a smaller form factor unit that you could use with a system that you already had so you weren't really backtracking or buying something redundant. Which is a, a clever concept for sure. Everything in this is fundamentally identical to the larger unit from what I can tell. The drives are set up the same way. It's just having that add-on and built-in component of the ColecoVision system that really sets it apart. This is the keyboard for the ColecoVision family computer system. The keys feel good. They are full motion keys. They don't have a click to them per se, but they do have kind of a nice feel. You can, you can feel the key engage as you go through the keyboard. It has these interesting function keys at the top. Looks like there's a series of six of these function keys. You also have this kind of four-way arrow system, which I like. You've got a home button in the middle, and then you've got the four arrow keys. Looks like you've got all of your standard keys, except for this one, the wild card key. Wild card! 
I'm pretty excited about the wildcard key. I'm really curious as to what that does. Over here on the right hand side, you have a holder for the original ColecoVision style joystick or remote control. I'm not sure what they referred to it as. The joystick feels good. It's got nice motion to it. And uh, it's kind of nice to have this handy little holder here right next to the keyboard. It looks like the whole thing connects via a standard telephone type connector to that front port connector that we saw earlier on the front of the ColecoVision Atom. Now this is the infamous Smart Writer printer from ColecoVision. This printer is pretty basic. Ours is not in great shape at all, really. But some of the interesting features of this is that it was designed that it could take any size paper up to nine inch, I believe they said. You could do tractor feed paper or you could do single sheets, depending on what you preferred. It had a system inside where you could have interchangeable daisy wheels themselves. So actually the wheels with all the print heads, you could just swap those out. So if something went wrong, you just buy another one, pop it in. Same with the ribbons, they were prepackaged cartridges that you could enter into the system. The power supply, as I mentioned, for the entire system lives in this printer. Everything communicates with the computer via this single connector. It's a single nine pin connector, so you add data going to the printer in order to print, as well as your primary voltages for the machine itself. Not a super design on their part and was really prone to failure. The power supply in the printer was poorly shielded, as I understand it, which means that it causes that EMI burst when you turn it on, which can cause problems for the data packs. It was definitely a problematic issue for the Coleco folks. My hope at the end of the day is that we have one of these printers that actually works to power up the system. If not, we have the additional power supply in an aftermarket form. One way or another, we should have a power supply that will work for the Coleco system, but it's interesting to see how this all is put together. We've got our Atom system ready to fire up here. I've also tried to put some space between the printer and the actual computer unit itself as that was one of the problems with the whole EMI burst issue. And I do not have any data packs in the drive just to make sure that we don't accidentally damage something. This is the nicer of the two memory console full units that we have, so I figured I would start with that. There were some pieces rattling around inside the not so clean unit of the Atom, and I'm not sure what they are yet. So we're gonna try the cleaner one first as I think it has the best shot of working. Now conveniently, the folks at Coleco put the main power switch for the entire system dead center on the back of the printer, which is not super convenient, but uh, we're gonna give it a try here. I don't have a lot of hope for this actually working, but let's see what happens. So far, I'm pleasantly surprised that this Atom actually did boot up. We do have Atom's electronic typewriter on the screen, which is what was built into the ROM. This was the word processor that came shipped with the system so that you could use it right out of the box. It looks pretty good. You've kind of got a ruler across the top. You've got uh, your various function keys, margin tab and margin release. Also, just a quick note, I did swap out the monitors because the other one was having an issue. This uh, old Commodore monitor seems to be working quite well with it so far. Let's see if we can play a little Donkey Kong here. ColecoVision presents Nintendo's Donkey Kong. Don't know how their licensing arrangement worked on that, but uh, I'm glad that they got the game. All right, what skill level should I choose? Definitely gonna go with skill one, one player. Let's see how this is. Ooh, I like the music. All right, how do I jump? Ooh, I got a hammer, I got a hammer. I think it's a hammer anyway. Oh. <laughs> I did not have the hammer quite long enough. Ah. Ah. <laughs> the hammer seems useful, but you can't actually climb any ladders or jump with it, so it does create some restrictions. You have to use it carefully. kind of stuck here <laughs> until the hammer is done. Ah! No! Everything looks and sounds really good on this Coleco Atom though. I'm pretty impressed. Granted, this is a Coleco Vision game, so it's not even really taking full advantage of the hardware. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I think I'm out of lives. I crashed it. Unlike the Nintendo, I don't even have to blow on the end of the cartridge. Ah, <laughs> timing is critical. Yay, I made it to the second stage.
Ah. <laughs> How do I keep the hammer and be able to get to Donkey Kong? Um. <laughs> I don't think I'm... Ah. <laughs> I came so close. But ultimately, I did not rescue the princess. It's a pretty good port of this game, though, honestly. It looks really good on the system, and even though it's a ColecoVision game, it plays it really well, and it's kind of nice that it has the added feature of having a normal composite video out because of the Atom computer, as well as a discrete audio out that we were able to find using the five-pin cable that we found for the computer as well. So kind of some neat additions to the normal ColecoVision console. The other thing that Coleco was pretty excited about when they first announced this system was that it came with the Buck Rogers game for the ColecoVision, but this is the Atom version. And finally, the third piece is the Super Game Pack version of Buck Rogers Planet of Zoom, the popular coin-operated arcade game by Sega, which due to the memory capacity of the digital data pack, contains all of the screens, all of the nuances, indeed all of the excitement for the first time of the actual coin-operated version. It's supposed to be a direct port of the arcade version of this game that came out by Sega in the arcades at the time. So they were pretty proud of this, and uh, it is on one of these digital cartridge packs, if you will. I'm curious if this will even load, but uh, we're gonna find out. Super Buck Rogers time. One of the things that's interesting about the Atom is the way that it actually reads these data cartridges. And I call them cartridges because they look like cassettes, but they're not exactly cassettes. They're built like a cassette, but as I understand it, they actually have a track that has an index of some kind so that the system can actually move back and forth and find different positions very quickly. It does seem to be working properly, which is impressive. The official Buck Rogers Planet of Zoom Super Game. I Sega. One player? Definitely gonna do skill one. Oh wow. Oh, I fire. Oh, there's a fire button. Nice. Now it's really interesting because it's actually, it's still running the tape while I'm playing. Which means that it must be loading some data in real time. How does it even know how to do that? But it's not running all the time. It stopped now. No, no! <laughs> motion on this looks really good. It's quick, it's got very good responsiveness, even with, I'm not a super fan of this controller necessarily, but it does work. Ah, oh no, now I'm to a different stage. Oh no, watch out for the buildings, ah! <laughs> very easy to collide with things if you're not paying attention. Oops. <laughs> that was speed level one, so I assume that this gets a lot more difficult. Oh wow, we've got, uh, I love Susie, I'm on top Q, uh, Starfighter, the best, not very good, hey there, and last Starfur. I did not make the leaderboard, just for fun. Let's see what this looks like in the fast mode. Let's go with four. Whoa, what's going on here? What? <laughs> oh. oh, it's like a different, So it didn't really change the speed. It changed all the graphics. And I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be. Is this intentional? It almost looks like characters that are in the wrong place or something. And see, now it looks normal again. I don't really see a lot of difference though. I mean, I'm still not very good at it. it doesn't seem to be really any different than playing through on level one unless there's just more enemies. Maybe that's, maybe that's the case. <laughs> Those towers come up way faster than they look. <laughs> there should be a disclaimer. When Buck Rogers dies, he goes into a blank field of stars, apparently. <laughs> well, I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised with the outcome of our first Atom system here at the Vintage Geek Museum. Our first system that we tried actually did power up with the original printer and it came up, we were able to play two different games with it, and we know that the program packs load as well as the data cartridges, so this is all a good sign. I'm really looking forward to seeing if we can get the external floppy disk to work with this, as well as maybe some of the other game packs that we have, 
but I think it's a really good first attempt and I'm excited that we have a working machine here for the museum. Hey, if you want to get involved and you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe. It's going to help us a lot. And also check out the merch we have available at the merch store. The link's in the description. We've got things from coffee mugs like this one to shirts like the one I'm wearing today. All sorts of different brands represented and uh, make some great holiday gift ideas as well. So check that out. Until next time, I'm Aaron and this has been Vintage Geek. <laughs>